you everyone. This is a lovely turnout. I'm Nancy Teeter, and I am the wife of Rick Teeter, Ann's son. And though I called her Annie, in my heart she was mom. She's very dear to me, and I was so honored to have Cheryl ask me to come up and share Annie's story. And I would hope to get through it without crying. <laughs> Annie had a profound love for her family and for their ranch in eastern Washington. And she possessed a really sharp wit, and that wit stayed with her right to the end. She had a deep concern for her people, for their happiness and the needs of others. And these traits are evident in the stories that she wrote about her early life. So I selected some of those stories just to demonstrate how she really cared for others and her joy of life. And as you know, um, some of this will be repeated of her biography, but it's certainly worth repeating. Jesus, I was born to Theodore Wilbert and Grace Pauline Lynam Weir on June 8, 1923, at my grandmother's home in College Place, Washington. My brother Wilbert and sister Esther, no doubt, were somewhere around, but as trained nurses, my father and Aunt Mabel were assisting the doctor. My mother had a difficult delivery, and no doubt, it was not my best time either. <laughs> she says, maybe it's best that I didn't remember that far back. We stayed at my grandmother's home until mother was able to travel, and then we returned to our home on the range. Our ranch home was located about 15 miles outside the town of Colville, and it was a log home that my father had built just before I was born. It had no electricity, no running water, and we used wood stoves for heating and cooking. Coal oil or kerosene was used in the lanterns. We grew all of our food except for flour, shortening, salt, sugar, and spices. We carried our water uphill from creeks on either side of the cabin. When I was four and a half, mother and I returned to Cottage Place, Washington, and she was admitted to the Walla Walla Sanitarium and Hospital where my brother John was born. My brother and sister stayed home with my father to help care for the livestock. It said that when my father got a letter saying he had a son, he danced around with happiness, <laughs> and John's here today. <laughs> Annie wrote about a family trip during the summer of 1929, and this, this struck me as an interesting story since that was the, the start of the Great Depression. She writes, I turned six in June, and Esther was nine, Wilbert was 11, and John was one and a half. Mother was expecting her fifth child. The trip was by train to California to see my grandma and grandpa Lyman. And they lived on the bank of the Santa Cruz River in a house adjacent to an apartment building they owned. The edge of the steep bank down to the river was covered in nasturtiums, the first I had ever seen. And to this day, whenever I see this flower, I think of my grandparents and their river dock. We also visited Aunt Florence in Glendale. She had a nice house with a big hedge in front. I have a picture taken in front of that house. Aunt Florence and Uncle Albert didn't have any children, and they took us for rides around the area, and Aunt Florence told me that I would be sitting in the front seat between her and Uncle Albert and would fall asleep. And then whenever the car would come to a stop at an intersection, I would wake up and say, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> and they would immediately fall back to sleep, only to repeat that same thing at the next stop. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> While in Southern California, we also visited my father's older brother, John. He was a doctor associated with Loma Linda Sanitarium. Uncle John and Aunt Maud lived in an orange grove, and there were oranges everywhere. We could go out in the yard and find ripe ones that had just fallen on the ground, and we ate our fill. At home, the only time we had an orange was at Christmas. During a Christmas program, one of the local merchants gave each child a stocking with a single orange. Aunt Maude wanted to give us a treat, 
So she went out and bought a sack of apples, and she makes applesauce. I turned up my nose at the applesauce and went out and got another orange. <laughs> <laughs> applesauce was our main fruit at home, but to have oranges, that was a real treat. I hope I didn't hurt Aunt Maud's feelings too much. We also visited Aunt Annie. I think she lived in Capitola, and she took us to Pismo Beach to play. And Aunt Lizzie lived in the Redlands. Our cousins, Crystal and Elbeth, took us for a walk up to Smiley Hyde Park. And what I remember most about that walk was we got caught in a rainstorm and the smell of the rain. When I smell rain on the dry leaves and grass here, it reminds me of that visit. Well, all good things must come to an end, and we took the long train ride home. In January, I had a new brother to play with and take care of. Paul was born at home. My father served as midwife, and I can remember sitting on and playing on a log out in the yard with John during the time Paul was being born. Esther and Wilbur were in school. I started school in September of 1930, and all of eight grades were taught at Bear Creek School. On March 20th, 1982, my brother Harold was born also at home. I suppose John, Paul, and I were told to sit on the log until we tell you to come in. <laughs> so, by, so now I had another baby to help care for. I never needed a doll to play with us. There were plenty of, to, of time to care and play with the little boys. In the fall of 1932, our parents moved us to our house in Colville so we could attend church school. And then in the spring, we went back to the ranch. This was repeated the following year. By June of 1934, our father was very sick. He left the ranch for medical care in Colville two days before my birthday, and we were notified by telegram on June 20th that he had died. Then the whole family went to the funeral in Walla Walla, Washington. I remember my father as a strict but loving, and I, and I did all I could to please him, and we were buddies. He was a very hard-working Christian man who hung or sang while he was working, and his favorite song is what a friend we have in Jesus. I remember my mother is a loving mother of six, and education for her family was of utmost important. Well, that's the highlights of Amy's story. Um, she helped her mother raise the younger boys, and then she went on, as you heard, um, to become a nurse, went to school in Walla Walla, and she stayed in a dorm room that was in the same building where her brother John was born. And I, I, uh, I shared Annie's written memories of her eating oranges, and as, but she didn't write about the strawberries, which I thought is interesting, and you've heard that. Strawberries were really precious um, and rare some years and, um, and a real treat for her on her birthday. So today, which would have been Annie's 91st birthday, in celebration of her birth, her life, her love, a family, we hope you'll enjoy the strawberry shortcake with us.